So you're just about to finish this amazing track and then the worst happens. <laughs> you stupid piece of <laughs> Today I want to talk about why DAWs crash. And the number one reason for that is a plugin that's causing an issue. It's incompatible. There's some problem somewhere, and it's every time you use that plugin, it's causing your door to fall over. Sometimes it may cause the door to fall over when you're loading it up, when you're starting up, and your door just won't load, and you think, what the hell's going on here? It was working yesterday. So here's a few tips. The first tip I want to tell you is this: is if your door starts crashing and you've been using it for 10 years and it's never crashed, then the first thing you want to do, and we'll call this door crash investigation this whole video, you want to go first and think about what you've changed. And if you've got a memory like me, which is like a goldfish, I don't know what I had for breakfast this morning, so I might have forgotten what I've done to my computer already. But if you've updated the OS, or if you're, you've updated the door software, or you've updated your plugin, or you've added a new plugin, or you've put a new audio interface on it, there could be a million different reasons why suddenly things aren't what they were yesterday, why your super rock steady DAW starts crashing. After you've thought about that, the next place to look, and the number one place to look, is your plugins because that's often the issue. That's the number one issue. I would say 99% of the time it's a bad plugin. And here's a really quick way to find a bad plugin. If you've tried everything else, then this won't hurt trying. Create a folder on your desktop, whether on Windows or Mac, and then open your plugin folder. If you don't know where your plugins are kept, you might have VST and AUs, or if you're on Windows, you might be just you'll just have VSTs, or if you're using Pro Tools, there'll be AX. They're in folders in different places. So uh, it, to accompany this video, there's a link in the description and a link coming up now that will tell you where to find your plugins, depending on what you do. Go find your plugin folder and create a, a folder on your desktop just to keep them safe as we go through this process. What you do is you go to your plugin folder and you find half or about half of those plugins and you drag half of those plugins out to the, that folder on the desktop. Then you relaunch your DAW, and then you try and make it crash again. If it doesn't crash, then swap them round and put the half that are in the folder back in the plugin folder and the half that are in the plugin folder back in the, 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 the safekeeping folder that's on your desktop. If then you get a crash, then what you want to do next is take half of the remaining ones left in the folder and put those back out on, in the desktop folder as well. It will take you less than eight moves to find the bad plugin using this process. And once you've found the bad plugin, brilliant, then don't use it or download the previous version because it might just be an update that started causing your DAW to crash. Now, you might be watching this and thinking, how do these things even get out in the open? Is this just shoddy coding? Do they just ship things before they're ready? Now, there might be some people that do that, but I work with a lot of software developers and I can tell you, rarely do they do that. Let me tell you what the problem is. Let's, uh, let's think of a, a big door like Pro Tools or, or Cubase or Logic. The beta testers are in the hundreds. If it's a big beta team, then let's call it 500. Now, here's the reality as well. A lot of beta testers are useless. Then They shouldn't even be on beta teams because they're on the beta team either to get an early version free or to be able to go into forums and tell people how how they're on a beta team. But the fact is, and I know this because I, I, I see beta teams all the time, a lot of beta testers aren't that good. There's probably a hardcore kind of like paratrooper SAS group of beta testers in any beta team, and it's probably about 20% of the entire beta team that do it right. The rest of them, okay, they'll probably stick it on their machine and they start using it, but they don't try and break it, which is what beta testers are supposed to do. I know some of the hardcore beta testers and they do everything in their power to try and break the DAW or try and break the plugin. Anyway, so let's just imagine, let's imagine all 500 were the paratrooper beta testers, let's say on a Pro Tools release. Some of them will be using Macs, some of them will be using Windows, different versions of that, they'll have different software, other different plugins as well. But here's the problem. That's good to a degree. But once the product's released, hundreds of thousands of people in the world then are then using the software. Imagine the permutations of hardware, software, audio interfaces, versions of those. 
it's it's a wonder anything works, let alone anything crashes. And that's why we start seeing bugs and crashes. Now this is what you should do. If this happens to you and you found a bad plugin that doesn't work with your DAW or, the, or whatever, then the best thing you can do is contact the developer and say, hey, it's not working. Don't start, start the whole rant email about how they're worse than people who, who drown puppies. Be nice to them. They're working hard to try and help you. So help them help you. So send them the machine information, what version of the OS you're on. A big, 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 big tip. If you're running a beta version of an OS or a beta version of a DAW, then don't even bother sending the email because nothing has any kind of support if you're running betas. Even if they're public betas, like the public beta of the, la the latest Mac OS, they're not qualified for that. So really, it's kind of life in your own hands time. So if you're using verified products that you know are supported by the manufacturers and the developers, then write to them, tell them about the machine, the OS you're using, uh, the version of the DAW you're using, what, what you can do to make it crash. Because if you can make something crash, I can guarantee you can make it crash every time. I've done that. So what you want to try and do is what we call a reproducible bug. And this is where you will keep making it crash and telling them how it crashes. I found one this week uh, in a piece of software I'm using, I can make it happen every time. In fact, it's kind of fingers crossed time every time I insert this plugin because I think it's going to crash and 99 times out of 100 it is. So this plugin right now doesn't play nice with the application I'm using it in. So I'll be in touch with them and I'll tell them, hey, this doesn't work. Send them an email, say, this is all the information I'm giving you. I hope it helps. And I can guarantee, I say I work with lots of small developers and I also know a lot of the big developers, they will work their socks off to try and fix it as, as much as possible. Now, some of you watching this will be saying, oh yeah, I've reported a bug 15 years ago uh, at the beginning of time and it still hasn't been fixed. Now, I know that happens. I understand that. But, but sometimes finding these bugs is whack-a-mole. It really is. It's trying to get to the bottom of it. Writing code isn't easy. Sometimes when you write code and fix something, you break something else. And the older the DAW or the older the code, the harder it gets. So, as I've said, if you think it's a plugin and it probably is that's crashing your DAW, then use the method of half and half and half, and you should find it in eight moves or less. If you can't fix it after that, or if you found a bad plugin, then let the developers know and hopefully it will get fixed soon. I hope this has been a help. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.